Hey guys, hello again. Welcome to another lesson in uh, microcontrollers. Now that we've got uh, some ARM stuff going on along with our PIC microcontrollers, I'm going to say microcontrollers now <laughs> since we're kind of branching off into some different kinds. We're going to, this time, we're going to kind of take a little bit of a break. Um, thought up something real simple that actually is quite useful um, that you can make at home or whatever. Um, and that is going to be making a digital thermometer. And I think what I'm going to do with this one, um, since this one's simple and it's kind of going into my next introduction on the ARM stuff, is I'm going to show you how to create one of these using the ADC module that's on board your microcontroller. And we're going to step back into our PICs, our microchip PIC microcontrollers. And we're going to use the ADC function and whatnot. And, uh, show you how to make your own thermometer and then once I, I get that it'll just be basically a part swap to do it with the ARM processor and I was wanting to basically kind of go over some of the stuff that we've gone over with the uh, PICs but with ARM so like ADC functionality um, uh, going to a LCD screen with the ARMs um, kind of doing everything we've covered with the PICs up till now um, the basic stuff with the ARM processor <coughs> and so this is going to be a good way of doing uh, doing that. I showed uh, I think an ADC thing um, on the picks but um, I'm going to make something else make a uh, a uh, thermometer which is kind of cool. Um, this is going to be a serial thermometer because we're going to put a little uh, RSC there too because I, I can't find uh, one of my LCD screens. I ha all I have is these great big huge ones and I don't really want to mess with those. It's, it's like graphic and whatnot. So anyway, um, don't want to mess with that. So I wanted just a basic normal LCD screen, nothing like overkill for a just a thermometer. <coughs> I can't seem to find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw that information out the RS-232 port um, using a MAX-232 transceiver chip, which is, if you haven't seen that uh, video, I suggest you check it out on my channel. There should be a uh, some videos on doing RS-232, doing serial communication to your PIC. And that's basically what we're going to do. We're just going to throw it out that, um, use hyperterm or something and uh, get the information that way. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first things first. When you are picking uh, what you're going to do, the number one thing you want to think about when you're doing a thermometer or any type of measuring device, a type of measurement type thing, like whether it be a thermometer or a fuel sender or a, you know, a certain gauge or a... Um, I don't know, anything. Anything that's going to measure something. What you want to keep in mind the whole time, what you need to defined, define first and foremost is precision. How precise do you want this to be? Do you want it to be, you know, within milli-degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, whatever? Um, do you want it to be, you know, and, and that's another thing. What, what system do you want it to be in? Do you want it to be in Celsius? Do you want it to be in Fahrenheit? Or do you want to give the user an option to choose Celsius or Fahrenheit? Or do you want it to be in absolute? Do you want it to be in degrees Kelvin or degrees Rankin? You know, what, what, do, you, what do you want to do? So, for our little simple um, demonstration, I'm not going to get too precise with it all. Um, however, I'll mention some ways of improving your precision. Right now, we're just going to use just a basic passive um, thermistor. Well, what I mean by passive is that it's just a thermistor. Basically, what it is is it's a resistor. Those of you that don't know what a thermistor is, um, it's a resistor that is, um, and the one we're going to be using is kind of like this one. It's kind of a long uh, leaded one. It was one that I had laying around, so that's what we'll use. Um, but what it is, it's a resistor that changes its resistance uh, due to temperature. So as the temperature changes around it, it will change its resistance as well. It has a temperature coefficient that uh, ranges over a certain range. And um, that's what we're going to pick. There are active thermistors, ones that are actually, um, they're an actual IC. Um, we'll look at one of those here in just a minute, but they're an actual IC. They have their own little kind of regulator circuit in it and whatnot, and they have a little op amplifier and things like that, and those you can get uh, quite precise. So if you don't want to have to worry about picking precision resistors and, and, and calculating your tolerance stacks and everything and getting your precision down, um, that will help. Now, there is some precision things you have to look out for in the selection of your microchip pick or really any microcontroller for that matter um, whether or not the onboard ADC has the precision that you want it to have because um, you may have to go with an external ADC that then feeds uh, 
maybe a digital set of information back either via serial or something like that through a serial line or something like that back to your micro and it does the actual measurement of the analog signal and whatnot because you need a higher precision um, the ones that we're going to be looking at I think they have a 1% I think they're one percent preci precision on the uh, on the ADC, but the problem that you get, and I see a lot of engineers, the mistake they make is there's what's called tolerance stack. Your tolerances can stack up on you and become a big tolerance. So let's say you have a one percent resistor that you're going to put with this, and you got and this ther thermal probe, this thermistor is one percent, and then so now you've got two percent tolerance, and then you get a one percent from the ADC. Well, there's another that's three percent now and then let's say you can get your calculation your math and your algorithm that you write for it down to a pretty good precision let's say it's it's close to a percent you know is your precision there well then you, you've now you're up to four you're almost five percent off now because all that stuff adds up every percent adds to each other and and does what's called the tolerance stack and it stacks up um, to where now you're you're way off so you want to watch that and like I said depending that's where you, what is your definition? Have you have you defined it to be super super precise? Have we and for ours, what we're going to do is we're going to define ours to be pretty much a tenth of a we'll say a tenth precise or, or well I won't even say that that's a little too tight. We'll say we'll keep it within plus or minus five degrees. So is where ours is. So pretty wide tolerance. You know, if we're five degrees off, it's no big deal. But you can, if you want to choke it down to a tenth of a degree percent, you may have to use some some maybe 0.01 percent resistors. You may want to select an active thermistor instead of um, this little passive, unless you can find a passive one that's it's down to like 0.05, uh, you know, percent or 0 0.1, 0.01 percent. Uh, which I, d I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to find that. And for it to track. Uh, and we'll look at the graphs here in a minute if you want it for, for it to track properly and everything. Um, uh, basically how to relate it because you only have a resistance so you're going to basically do a volt divider with it and then you'll get a voltage out of it. Now how precise is that volt divider and how precise is on so you got some stuff to worry about to, that'll stack up on you so you got to pay attention to everything. Everything matters then. So I would suggest if you want really precise going with an active solution and then you may or may not depending on how accurate your microcontroller's internal ADC is um, you may or may not want to use that. You may want to use an external one that has a higher precision and has maybe a higher sampling rate and things like that. And that's that's what we'll kind of look at in, in this. Um, but nothing too complicated for now. What we're going to look at, um, coming down here, they make these in 0201, 0402s, 603s, 805s. They make them in all different package sizes. Um, what we're going to look at is going to be the um, thermo string type. If I click on that, on the, this is Murata. This is the one that I use is from Murata, and they uh, theirs are very nice. I've used them before, and they work they work quite well. Um, you can get them where they're twisted um, a little bit to uh, give you a little bit of, of uh, noise reduction, so it won't be so noisy and kind of get rid of any inductance that this might have. Um, so that way, it kind of improves the uh, the speed of it. But uh, for our intents and purposes, we don't care. We're just going to go with the, just the straight end one that's like this, which is the NXFT series or whatever that is. And we're going to go with this one. And what we're going to go with is a 10K, so you can get them in you can get them in 10K, 47K, 100K. You can get them in a few different types of stuff. So we're going to go with the 10K. Okay. Now, if we scroll on down, we should get, now they're talking about here, they'll talk about different mounting methods, what to do, what not to do, how to mount them. You can mount them through a hole. Uh, it gives you how much, yes, the pole strength of it and all that stuff. So, we're going to speed pass that. Okay, this is what we want. We want the temperature characteristic table. Okay, what this is telling us is the resistance at different temperatures. Okay, so we've got... Um, it's going to be uh, normalized around room temperature, which room temperature is most commonly referred to as 25 degrees C. Um, that's just, I don't know, I've just seen that on many data sheets on pretty much anything that's related to temperature. Most of the time, temp room temperature is taken at 25 degrees C, and that's around, what, 70 70 some odd, 72, 73, what is that, 70, 70 some odd degrees Fahrenheit, I don't know, I'd have to do it. I work in Celsius so much that I just, 
I think of everything in Celsius. So, but 25 is room temperature, which is like 71, 72 degrees, something like that Fahrenheit. So it will be normalized. What I mean by normalized is that it starts at its given value. So they say that it's a 10K resistor. That means at room temperature, it's 10K. Now, once you start moving uh, away from room temperature, move down, the resistance is going to go up. You move up in temperature, the resistance is going to go down. Now, this is exactly what we need to do our calculation. Now, I'm not going to, this is the, uh, the hardware part, so I'm not going to show you how to, how to take this table, and what we'll do is we'll plot it out, and we'll, we'll create a line of best fit. We'll basically do a, a oh, whatever that's called, a, uh, like a exponential regression, or whatever that's called, because uh, this forms like an exponential function, I think. It might be quadratic, I don't remember. But... Um, once we plot it, you'll be able to see, and then we'll pick a, uh, a regression method to uh, get us close. And again, that gets you close. If you're wanting super precision, then this is probably not the best bet to go. You're going to want to go with maybe an active device or get some really precise parts and really, you know, just really crank down on that. For this, like I said, plus or minus 5 degrees is great. That's good enough for me. So we're going to get in the ballpark. So anyway, so the, 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 I, will, I won't show you how we'll derive all the, our formula and stuff. That's what we'll get when we do um, the uh, the software. I may break that into two parts, um, just because there's there's going to be kind of a lot that goes into coming up with our algorithm. So I may go like maybe a formula or a temperature algorithm video, and then we'll do the coding video. I don't know something like that. But basically, that's what you look for in here. Um, pretty straightforward. It's a 10k ohm resistor that moves up and down with temperature. The you know resistance changes. So basically, what we do is if we create a volt divider, we'll get different voltages out of it, which we can measure with an ADC. And I'm going to show you that uh, right now. So here's our circuit. Okay, here's our circuit. We got our power supply up here. We got our little voltage regulator and whatnot. I'm going to use a 16F676 chip. So uh, again, you know, not going real super precise here. Just a uh, pretty basic um, chip that we're using. Um, got some RS-232 up here, so I got our little port and our little transceiver chip and receiving transmit going out, <coughs> so that way we can get this information out. Here it is. I know this is such a whopping piece of circuitry. It's hard to get your head around. It just, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> For those of you that haven't caught my sarcasm being very sarcastic, it's very simple. It is very, very simple. All it is is you're just going to take, you're going to put two resistors in series, uh, run some current through it, and basically pull a volt divider off. And what this will give us was this will give us a range uh, anywhere in our uh, middle, basically room temperature, will be 2.5 volts. Because right when the voltage comes, this will be 5 volts. When it comes across two of the same exact resistors, it'll just have it. So we'll be centered at 2.5 volts. We can go up and we can go down. So we can go up to 5 volts. We can go down to uh, close to 0 volts. Not really, but close to 0 volts. So we can go up and down there. So anyway, that's what we got to play with. Um, the hardware is very, very simple this time. Um, just basically a volt divider is what we're going to use and then what we'll do is we'll have this kind of hanging off the board and when you put your fingers around it or whatever you can make it go up and down now one last thing I wanted to show you guys before um, <coughs> I turned in here is uh, one of the active ones one that's good that is uh, fairly cheap that you can use is one by microchip believe it or not ha ha microchip makes things other than microcontrollers I know scary isn't it in fact actually microchip even makes uh, op amplifiers um, they make a whole host of things microchips a great place to check out um, those of you that that may be tuning in for the first time or something and haven't ever worked with microchip stuff they make some pretty good stuff in fact I know for a fact they also make an auto offset nulling op amplifier which is actually pretty darn cool um, <coughs> some amplifiers will have a huge offset and you have to trim it out um, these will like auto adjust it's pretty cool so anyway back to back to temperature sorry to go off on a tangent I just they have some really cool stuff um, here's one of their uh, low power active ones it's an MCP 9700 or you can get the 9701 and 9701A and the A versions I can't remember between versions I think it's temperature ranges and things like that so I like, yeah, I like this one here's the accuracy they're plus or minus two degrees C over this temperature range this one's plus or minus four over that temperature range um, <coughs> and that's over the whole range so that's not like you know and then let's say optimize the converter. See, it's even got its own 
I think converter in it. Yeah, it comes in just a little t sh little small TO92 case. Yeah, small little package. Or you can get it in a SOT23 or one of the SC70 packages. And um, this one's pretty cool. Basically, what it does is let's see. I'm trying to see if they have I can't if they have a application part. It's been a while since I've looked at this. I don't know if they have an application section. Well, anyway, <coughs> here's the uh, the pinout. They'll have ground. They have a V out, which is just voltage out, and then a power supply pin, and that's pretty much it. Real simple, and that's their um, for. Let's see where are we at output the sensor. We measure the V out. And, okay, and that tells you where it can go. It ranges from 100 millivolts to 1.75 volts, and then one of the other ones ranges from 200 millivolts to 3 volts. So that's kind of cool. They should tell you somewhere. Okay, here we go. Here, here's what I was looking for. Application information. This is always awesome. Of course, you know, like a dummy. I guess I could have clicked over there. Anyway, bear with me. Um, they give you um, your equation for your V out, and all this, this TC and TA and all that stuff. See, it says CDC electrical characteristics table. That's where you'll uh, come back up to your electrical characteristics, and then depending on what chip, <coughs> that's the reason I don't state it. Is that it depends on what chip you have. If you have the 9700 or the 9701, um, they have different uh, they have different things. So like it, it'll show you. Like, here's the TC. There's that TC, the temperature coefficient. Uh, one's 10, one's 19 and a half. So just gotta just gotta read through there, and then you can get all your stuff that you need from out of there. And so see, here's where it just tells you to take it to the analog input of your micro and the V out of it and there you go and then it even gives you kind of a little a little rundown of if you if it's not accurate enough enough for you you can get it down to to half percent um, by doing different things if you calibrate the system at a 25 degree um, basically what you'll do is you run a calibration and uh, calibration algorithm in your pick that when you stick the thing in a known 25 degree C atmosphere and then you can you can calibrate then you know zero out your stuff or whatever calibrate out any error that you might be getting some of that and they tell you they give you some hints so very good information so that's one I'm not gonna go through it a whole bunch but that's one that is an active thermistor instead of it just literally being a chunk of wire that are you know two dissimilar metals or whatever that are connected together that vary at different temperatures it's actually a, a whole IC that has uh, you know probably a little op amp in it and things like that that uh, that help out that signaling and do that processing for you so anyway, that's uh, pretty much all I had for the hardware side. Um, let's see, I can uh, go back to our, there we go, get that out of the way. <coughs> go back to our schematic here. So that's pretty much it for our deal. Just took it up like we normally do, put some RS-232 on it. Again, if you haven't seen that, check out my RS-232 videos. Um, I'll show you exactly how to put all this together, how to code it, um, get your, finger, get your uh, computer to hook up to it and all that. Um, throw in your volt divider using your uh, thermistor as one of the resistors. And then uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll be uh, coming. I'll come back with you guys. Hopefully, I can get back quickly. I've just Christmas is here, so it's been just crazy busy. My family's huge, so I'm trying to I'm trying to get more videos out. I see um, a lot of new subscribers. I want to welcome you. Thank you for subscribing. Um, anybody else, if you're watching this for the first time, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Either that or check out my channel and uh, see what other kind of fun stuff we've been doing. Uh, we'll be hopefully bringing you some more really cool stuff. I'm still working on that. I know you saw that in that one video. I'm still working on that embedded Ethernet stuff. Um, I just uh, haven't had time to put that all together. I got some other cool stuff involving LEDs and some light and stuff. I've got some other kind of cool stuff that's on the horizon. So we should be, we should have some interesting things for you guys all to check out. So subscribe, check out the channel. Um, I'll be back here in a little while. Hopefully it won't take me three weeks to get back to you, but we'll be back with the coding side after this. Sorry this movie took so long, but I had a lot of information I wanted to share with you guys. I've been gone for a while. Thanks a lot. See you later.